What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as the D365 Geek, and today we are talking about Power Automate and OneDrive for Business, and we're going to look at the action which is Create File. So this action allows you to create a file in your OneDrive for Business, and you can put content into that file and you can name that file. So it's a really handy action to get to grips with. So let's take a look at it today. So in Power Automate, I have a flow here for when a file is modified, and we're going to trigger that flow on um, when a file is modified in the Power Automate folder that we've created on our OneDrive. We're not going to infer, um, we're not going to include the subfolder, and there's a reason for that as well. So next, we're going to choose New Step. Then when I search OneDrive for Business, and that's all one word, just can't type OneDrive for Business, and then the actions we're going to choose Create File. Now, the reason we're actually using this when a file is modified trigger and not the when a file, file is modified trigger uh, properties only is that when a file uh, when a file is modified actually gives you content of the file itself. Um, I kind of was talking in my previous video about using one over the other. The other one gives you the properties, so things that you can use in terms of uh, people's names and times and things like that in an easy format. This one and the, also the other one, the create, when a file is created, actually gives you things like content and things like that, which is actually really important for when you do other things. So it's an important, uh, important difference to note, and that's why we're using this one today. So back to the create file. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to specify a folder path. So in here, I'm going to click on the little folder icon. I'm going to go up from the root. I'm going to choose the Power Automate folder, but I'm going to click on the arrow. And then I'm going to click on the Stop Looping folder. This is a mistake I make all the time because I, I don't really think about things um, like too, uh, too, too much when I'm doing these sorts of things. Um, but when you are um, creating a file, it's also being modified. So this would like constantly loop. Uh, and, and even if I use the create a file um, trigger, it will just constantly loop through if we don't include a subfolder. So when I include the subfolder, we've got the trigger to not include the subfolder. Uh, and when I create this file in that subfolder, and therefore it's not going to re trigger this flow, um, you can just get stuck in these loops where it's just triggering over and over and over again. It's not what you want. So when I create the file in this Power Automate stop looping folder here. The next two things that it requires is a file name and file content. So file name, we'll choose um, test uh, create uh, create file, uh, and we'll say dot uh, .docx. So I'm just going to hard code this in. We can actually get the, the file type out if we wanted to. Uh, and in the file content, what we're going to do is we're going to choose some direct content, and we can see here it says file content right at the top. So we can choose this. So we can copy that into there. Now, all we need to do is save and test it. So click on save. We'll click on test. Uh, I'll perform the trigger action, save and test. And we'll wait for this to start running. So uh, I think it's running now, it's good. We'll go in here and we'll update this PATVD, uh, Power Automate Test Video. Uh, and we'll add a new line, say, uh, hey, Ma, look. I'm on TV. Points if you know where that line is from. Uh, we can see it's saving at the top there. We can see it's saved. If we go back to Power Automate, we can see uh, the flow has now run successfully. So uh, this may just take a moment to catch up, just in case we can drop out and go back in here. I don't know why this works, but it does. Uh, and we can see that the tree is triggered, and then we can see the create file. Uh, and we get some data uh, about the file in here. So we've got like the ID, we have the name of the file, we have the path of the file, have the, where it's modified, and stuff like that. If I go back to OneDrive Business, go into the Stop Looping folder, we can actually see that test create file is in here, um, and we can see that's the that's the data. So it's actually it's actually created it before that line was added, uh, which is really interesting. That the fact that OneDrive for Business actually um, saves and modifies things as you're going into them and, and as you're typing. Um, it saves really quickly. So a lot of my testing is actually around the fact that um, as I'm doing these things, it's already doing it's, it's already doing stuff and already um, updating and, and everything else. But what you what is really interesting is that 
OneDrive business like SharePoint is, is like document management and document storage, meaning that there is version control in this. So if I go back to, um, if I close this and I uh, close this and go back to here, if I re-trigger this flow and click on test and say I'll pull and trigger action, if I just go into this, this file here, uh, and just make um, any sort of, so it, as you can see, it's instantly saving there. If I go back to the flow, we'll see the flows run successfully. Um, and if I go back to OneDrive and go into that stop looping folder, you'll notice that it doesn't create another version. It, it's updated the same version of the file. Um, and you can see that we have this Hey Look Martin on TV. So that's a really cool thing that it understands that when you're creating the file, you may not need to actually create the file, you just may need to give, um, create a new version of the file. Um, and if we go into here, we can probably see the version history uh, and we can see um, how many times this has been updated and this has been changed. So that's a really, really cool function of OneDrive for Business. Um, something that is really important to note as well, um, that if you're creating a file, if it's not uh, dynamic, um, you can just use these things if you need to update things as well. Um, and it will just it will just update those versions and it'll give you that version history so you can actually um, uh, revert these histories if you want as soon as you restore and you can open this file and delete this version. So it gives you lots and lots of great functionality here. Um, so this is a really cool action uh, and one that I like playing around with. So you could do stuff like this where you need to create a file from other files being dropped in. So uh, maybe you have a file or a folder somewhere or things are being uploaded. Um, to OneDrive, you need to copy that to a different directory that maybe other people have access to. You can use uh, the create a file function to do this, and then every time that file is updated in that directory, you can update it in your in your other directory as well. And it's all version controlled, which is brilliant. So uh, let me know in the comments down below what you guys use this for. I'm always interested in new things, uh, how people use the technology, um, and any issues that they have. Um, if you did like this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I'll see you next time.